गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ यूर टीम मी फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम माई नेम इज शैलेश भूपालम आई बीन टीचिंग इंडियन इकोनॉमी एंड पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एट इन साइट्स फॉर द पास्ट फाइव ईयर्स नाउ आई एम टीचिंग ओनली पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन आई थिंक यू हैव न्यू फैकल्टी फॉर इंडियन इकोनॉमी सो मी एंड मंजुनाथ सर बेसिकली टेक पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एवरी ईयर this class whatever we have we will have right now is just a orientation it is an introduction to the subject how many of you have uh, not yet decided your optional subject okay half of you have not yet decided usually we recommend you to attend this orientation sessions but by then you should have in your mind at least two or three subjects that among this i'll choose one and after that if you attend orientation and if if you you can say get into the details of the subject you will be able to narrow it down to one but if you have absolutely no idea at all which subject to choose or no list of three four subjects also then you have to i think if you meet your mentors probably they will be able to suggest uh, some three subjects among which you can do some a bit of research and you can uh, then choose but because you are here probably you are already considering public administration as one of those subjects so by the end of this session you will get a rough idea on what the subject is about and is it a right fit for me so everybody already probably knows the pattern for mains exam general studies is 1000 marks and essay is 250 marks optional subject which we will take is 500 marks how many of you are uh, not from 25 batch 24 batch how many of you are there okay very few are from 24 batch most of you are from 25 batch so if you have attended uh, any subject consider you attended polity or consider geography geography entire subject put together i think probably more than 100 hours uh, class they take at insights probably everywhere it's the same so a single subject like that uh, which which translates to i think some 60 marks 50 marks in mains they take for 100 hours now multiply that if it is 50 marks multiply that by 6 that is 300 multiply that by 10 and that is 500 so whatever effort that you are putting in in one of these gs subjects geography which gives 50 marks polity which gives some 70 marks you multiply that and you see you will be able to understand the scale of optional subject but most people don't look at it like this most people don't understand the level of effort or the level of understanding grip that is required in optional subject you see how much average student is investing time on effort on optional it is only 15% because they are attending gs classes and in gs faculty are telling them that you have to do this that etc they are spending all their time on gs only but in gs the problem is all gs subjects put together are 1000 marks whereas in optional a single subject is 500 marks that means you should be able to understand and you should you should give the due respect that optional subject deserves that means you should be able to put in the kind of effort that is necessary only then you will be able to score marks people usually start blaming optionals that in literature we don't get enough marks or in public administration we don't get enough marks or some other thing but in reality the reason is this that they are not putting enough effort on optional you understand so essay 250 marks but they put only 5% of effort some people don't even put that much also so if you have to score well then you have to give due attention whatever it deserves depending upon the marks that it holds this is the first thing that you have to understand <laughs> next optional exam pattern probably new students so uh, you may not have seen optional subject pattern there are eight questions i mean so far 
If you look at the last 20 years, they have followed similar type of pattern. There are eight questions in optional, out of which you have to answer only five. That means there is choice. In GS subjects, there is no choice. But in optional subject, there is a choice in the questions. You will usually have, you have to answer five out of eight questions. There is part A and B. That means you have to choose basically, uh, there are four questions each in part A and B. You can see four here and four here. This first question and fifth question are mandatory. That means you don't have a choice there. You have to answer those two questions. Apart from this, whatever you want, you can choose. So after you have written two, how many are remaining out of five? Three are remaining. Three are remaining, you can choose two there and one here, two here and one there. However you want, you can split it. Basically, these two are mandatory questions. This is the current pattern of every option. Everybody understood this pattern. Eight questions out of which you have to answer five, two are mandatory and the other three have a choice of what you want to choose. Apart from this, these mandatory questions usually are all 10 markers. Five questions, 250 marks. That means each question is worth 50 marks. So 50 marks, if you divide it into 10 marks, then there are five questions under this of 10 marks each. Same here in part one question here also, five questions of 10 marks. The others, usually there are three questions. How do you divide 50 marks into three questions? There will be either two 20 marks and one 10 mark question or two 15 mark and one 20 mark question. So they, however they want, they can split it. You understood this. So this is a pattern of optional example. Everybody understood? Any questions here? So if you choose public administration, my basically, uh, Objective of this session is you should be able to understand what the what are the problems you will face in public administration, what are the advantages you will face, so that you can make an informed choice on whether you should take this optional or not. And if you have already taken this optional, then you should know exactly what you are going to study about, so that you have a, some sort of clarity, some anchor in your mind that this is what I am going to do. So first thing is some positives, advantages of public administration optional. You will, this is actually the biggest uh, subject with the most overlap. That means, if you consider GS, basically, consider I have given what is the actual level of overlap between GS subjects and public administration optional. Polity and governance actually, entire polity and governance is part of public administration. In GS paper 2, only thing that is left out is international relations. So that part is not part of public administration. So out of entire GS paper to 70% is public administration. Advantage is here is you, it will reduce 70% of your effort in studying GS paper 2 because it is the same topics, same concepts, similar type of questions. In GS3, in GS3 you don't have too much of uh, overlap, 30% overlap is present. In economy, we will study financial administration in public administration, there is an overlap there. And then disaster management, this is also a chapter in public administration, same thing is present in GS. If you study public administration, usually it will be in much more depth compared to GS. You can easily answer all these questions without uh, studying particularly for the subject. Then in GS4, GS4 is which paper? Ethics, integrity and aptitude. Usually <coughs> GS4 ethics paper actually it is a part of three different subjects. I mean it is comprised of three different subjects. One is public administration, second is psychology, attitude, motivation and these type of aspects are from psychology. And the third is philosophy. So public administration they have given slightly more weightage so 40% and the other two philosophy and psychology are 30-30%. In philosophy you will read about um, various ethical theories like utilitarianism, deontology, etc. So this is all part of GS only. And so that means if you study public administration properly, there is a 40% overlap with GS4. The biggest advantage and this is actually the biggest reason most of the students who are taking public administration, they are taking because of this reason that overall if you add this up, 70 and 30 and 40, you can see that 
how instead of studying four GS papers, it will al almost be similar to studying only 2.5 GS papers because 70, 30 and 40 means you have added 140. That is one entire GS paper and 40 percent of another GS paper is covered in public administration. So, in fact, since they introduced this paper long ago, probably 30 years ago, why most people are taking this subject is because of this one single reason that the overall effort required to clear the exam is reduced by a great extent because there is a lot of overlap. Then apart from this, what are the other advantages? Because in public administration, we take a lot of things in, in depth. That means consider what we do in um, GS classes. Compared to that, the amount of depth that we go into in public administration is much higher. This makes you much, uh, this makes you have much more clarity on whatever topics that you are studying. And in GS, you will be able to score better marks compared to people who have not studied to this level of depth. This is another advantage. So deeper understanding of issues helps in writing good answers in GS. So if I have to quantify it, put it in numbers, then those who take public administration optional will score 20 to 30 marks extra in all four GS papers combined. I mean, it's not more than that, but if you have studied for public administration properly, then at least 20 to 30 marks. So out of this thousand marks, Usually, highest scorers are getting 450. This is a low scoring exam. In general, probably everybody knows that if you score 45 percent in mains, you are probably getting first rank or second rank. So, that means out of 1000 people are scoring 450. And um, usually, you if you are scoring 400, you can push it to 430 or something if you take public admission because you are writing better GS answers at least in these subjects where there is overlap. You understood this point. Then whatever you have studied in GS, you will study a lot of examples, facts, current affairs. All these things can be used as examples in writing public administration answers. If you are thorough with your GS knowledge, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever GS papers are there, if you study them properly then you can score 20 marks more in public administration or this interchangeability is there between public administration and op, I mean GS. Current affairs is important for public administration. So if you are good with current affairs, current affairs means it is not something else, same thing whatever you study for GS, exact same current affairs, same event, same news you have to write in public administration also. If you write that, then you will score extra about 20 marks in public administration. You understood? So, apart from this, it helps you getting a broad perspective about government. Ultimately, what is the job that you are trying to do? You are getting into IAS or IPS or it is civil service. Civil service means you are working for government. Before you get into government itself, you will start understanding how government works from every dimension so that you will be able to do your job in a much better manner. This is basically why they have introduced public administration optional is this reason only that you understand and because you have strong understanding of how government works, you will be a better officer compared to people who have not studied it. This is basically the object. It helps in building opinions and gives an edge in personality test. Usually how uh, basically the entire scheme of the exam is designed. I think everybody knows uh, there is prelims, mains and interview. Prelims is a recognition test. Recognition means what? Recognizing something means what? Identifying it. If you have already seen a person, next time you see the person, you will probably recognize. Okay, I know this person. I have seen this person in this wedding or in this movie or something. That is recognition. Prelims is a recognition test because the answer is right in front of you. You, if you have studied it, you will recognize it thinking, okay, I remember reading this in my notes or reading in this textbook because the answer is already there among the options you have to choose. This is recognition. Mains is a recall test. Recall means answer is not in front of you. You have to remember, recall the answer from whatever you have already studied. Because it is a subjective answer, you have to write 20 points, 15 points on some subject, some topic that you have studied. 
and they are only asking you a question you have to recall everything and you have to write in mails and interview in the name itself it is there it is a personality test personality means they are going to test your opinions on the matter for prelims if you just read and you have some basic knowledge you can answer some questions and for mains if you remember things you can answer some questions but in interview you should have formed an opinion on a topic what is the meaning of forming an opinion forming an opinion means after understanding the entire issue for example citizenship amendment act first thing to have an opinion on it should you know what it is or not you should know what it is that and then you should have understood exactly what is the consequence of the citizenship amendment act and then finally you can form an opinion on it depth of understanding is important on anything to form an opinion and that is why because we are going into much more depth in public administration you will be able to form well informed opinions which they will ask in personality test they will ask what is your opinion on x y z and you should be able to tell this is what i think and <coughs> because of such and such reason opinions cannot be you cannot bring an opinion out of thin air without any reason you cannot have any opinion you should be able to give clear reasons why you have this opinion and if you have to give reasons you should understand that topic thoroughly and so why public administration helps you get maybe you know, around 10 15 marks extra in personality test is because it helps in building opinions and you won't get any serious edge like you can say whatever we saw overlap but at least that it's 10 to 15 marks increase in people who take public administration as optional even though their optional scores are same it means maybe whatever they are getting in other subjects if they are a good student if they are doing whatever we are asking them to do then they will be able to score more in gs and in uh, personality test also and as we discussed because this is the job that you are going to do basically we will see um, what you are going to study and you will start understanding that okay this is directly related to whatever job you that you are going to do and because you are going to read about the job and how to do it better from now itself when you get into the job you will be able to do the job it it is basically an administrative job anyone knows what is the meaning of administration administration generally forget about public administration you would have heard of the word right what is the literal meaning of the word administration means hmm? governance okay basically it is taking care of something managing something so your job as an administrator will be to manage up imagine you are the head of a district district administration you are a district collector means you take care of the district manage the district taking care of it means whatever happens there is your responsibility imagine there are floods in the district people will you cannot wait for somebody's order to do something you are entirely responsible for the district if you don't do anything minister will ask you ah, we have given you entire freedom and responsibility here why you have not done anything they will you cannot wait for somebody to tell you something you are entirely responsible for that particular district if you are usually ias is made a head of a particular department particular district so particular ministry when they become secretaries etc then it is entirely their responsibility they cannot say that i did not receive orders from someone they won't receive orders for everything they have to you know finally take the decision and they have to do whatever is necessary to achieve the goals of that organization this is basically meaning of administration to be able to do administration better there are some skills it is not something that you are born with you learn how to do administration and how do you learn basically by studying it and by practicing it you learn so that is what we will study in public administration basically mba or people who have studied management about 60% of government administration and private administration is same can anybody identify some common factors between private administration and government administration imagine you are working in government as district collector 
or you are working as senior manager in some corporate entity you will have people reporting to you or not you have subordinates you have to give orders to them and they have to do that work is money involved or not you will give them salaries organization spends money to achieve its goals there are people there is money there are technologies they will keep accounts all these things are similar in you can say public administration private administration everywhere it is same so only difference is what goal are we trying to achieve in government what is the ultimate goal ultimate goal is people's welfare in private what is ultimate goal profit is ultimate goal. so public administration as a subject is common sensical in nature that means if you uh, attend the classes properly you will develop that logic whatever is necessary to write answers well it is a common sense type of subject basically there is nothing very difficult about the subject in general so um, we will see what exactly is the challenge after this <laughs> background usually people feel that i should have studied public administration as a subject in my graduation or post graduation or something but actually nobody actually does that in fact people if you see whoever has got ranks in the last 10 years 15 years uh, i think in the entire 15 years there is only one person who has studied public administration and then got a rank all the other people they are all you know different uh, whatever doctors engineers agriculture graduates psychology graduates etc there is no relationship between what they are studying in optional subject and what their original graduation was so whatever your background is it won't matter when we start classes we will assume that you know nothing about the subject absolutely zero and from there we will start class and you will be able to uh, initial classes we will go slow so that you will be able to pick up pace and you will be able to understand the class um, we will tell you exactly because it is a new subject there is any subject you take actually which is completely new there is an initial learning phase initial around 10 to 15 classes you will face a slight sense of discomfort but after that you will become comfortable with the subject very few people have graduation in public administration usually nobody actually takes public administration for graduation in india most people take engineering or um, medicine earlier we used to get lot of engineers now there is a heterogeneous mix there are people who are taking science and others also so coming to challenges what are the concerns or what are the challenges with regard to public administration this is a dynamic subject dynamic means as current affairs whatever things are changing uh, you can say that current affairs will become important for the exam like gs is all dynamic already it means you have to study current affairs to be able to score well in gs 2 3 i think everybody all the faculties are already telling you that you have to read newspaper current affairs compilation insights magazine etc in that sense public administration is also dynamic for example imagine um, there is president's rule in a state that is that will be imposed maybe this year or something if it is in news then article 356 of the constitution which you can say enables president's rule will be important for public administration it is important for gs2 also that is why there is a overlap between gs2 and public administration you understand whatever is happening in current affairs is important for public administration so if you are taking public administration as optional you have to study current affairs well it can be seen as a challenge or it can be seen as a some people look at it as a benefit also because now you have to study public administration uh, i mean whatever current affairs you study it is going to be same for both public administration and all the other subjects so it just becomes more important but if you feel that you are somebody who uh, i mean it is difficult for you to keep in touch with current affairs study current affairs thoroughly studying current affairs means um, usually what i suggest for current affairs practical approach is you read newspaper for half an hour a day most people probably initially they spend 3 hours 4 hours to read the newspaper even we everybody does the same we when we started we also did the same but the problem is there is no way that you will remember what you read in the newspaper today one and a half years later when you are writing the exam 
So as long as you don't remember it, there is no use of putting in that effort today. Think of your effort as a like a you know like a raindrop. Each hour that you spend is like a drop of rain. And every hour you should be able to collect all this effort and you should be able to bring that to the exam. If you are just doing randomly something which will actually not translate to exam marks in the exam, then that is all water that is evaporating. You cannot you cannot create a stream or a river with this this amount this type of effort that you are putting in. Reading newspaper for four hours, not making any notes out of it, you will not remember after two months what you read. That means that is an evaporated useless effort. You understood this. Then how can you make your effort useful? Simple, read half an hour only newspaper headlines. It takes only five minutes to just go through all the headlines. Maybe take 10 minutes to go through headlines. After that, take 20 minutes to read editorial. It is not possible initially to complete your editorials in 20 minutes, but it is fine. Keep a 20 minute timer. You should be able to gather the most important crux of the matter as soon as possible. That is a skill. And you will develop that skill if you start putting a lim time limit and if you start reading these editorials. Initially, you will be able to only read one or two editorials, it is fine. But after 20 days, 30 days, you will be able to read majority of editorials. One or two articles, if you skip also, it is fine. First thing you have to understand about newspaper is there are news cycles. That means whatever you are reading right now probably will again repeat itself. After three months, four months, there is a continuous repetition of things. You don't have to feel that I am missing out something just because you did not read an editorial or you missed some page or one day you could not read newspaper, it won't matter. Because what is in newspaper is repeating itself, we are reading since 10 years and we can see if I take today's newspaper there is hardly 5% things which are new. Country does not change so quickly that since yesterday today something great has happened. So it is a very, very slow process, so that means they will keep on repeating the same thing over a long period of time. So, you don't have to be perfect in reading newspaper, but you have to you have to be consistent. Keep only half an hour, read 10 minutes of editorial and 20, I mean read 10 minutes of headlines and 20 minutes of editorials. When reading editorials, usually what uh, students face is they are not able to understand a word or they are not able to understand a line, but they are not important. After reading entire editorial, you should be able to summarize it in your own words in two lines. What is this person trying to say? If you can simplify it and summarize it in your own words, that is good enough. You understand? You don't have to understand every word to understand what the person is saying. So this is newspaper. Another one hour, you are, this is half an hour. Another one hour you have to spend our insights monthly compilation. We give last month's entire uh, current affairs. Usually they will make notes properly and they will, uh, you can take a printout. It is available for free on website. You can get it spiral bound and read that properly underline it because you can later revise it you cannot revise newspaper but you can revise this earlier long ago when we were preparing for the exam we did not have this so what we used to do was we used to spend three hours reading newspaper another two hours making notes and then another one hour to do revision of this but that is a very inefficient and we can say um, six hours if you are spending only on this and you don't have much time to read anything else but right now most of the toppers they, they are doing this one. They will tell you I am reading newspaper 3 hours if you see YouTube interviews. But when they come to us they will tell clearly what is actually for me. Because we have seen them before the exam and after the exam also we can tell you. You have to be intelligent in your approach. You cannot spend more than one and a half hours on current affairs. If you do this consistently then it is enough for both public administration and, and GS also. You understood this. Usually your monthly compilation, whatever it is, it is around 100, 120 pages long. That means if you read 20 pages a day, you can finish it in a week. 20 pages in one hour. Then after that, next week you do revision of the same thing. Every subsequent revision that you do should only take half the time. If you took one week to finish this monthly compilation, the next revision should take how many days? Three days, maybe four days. So if it has to take less time, what should you do? The first time you are doing it, reading it. You have to do underlining, you have to highlight the important parts. So that next time reading will take less time. This is basically how you make sure that whatever effort you are putting in now will easily translate to marks later. You understood this. So when I say that it is dynamic, 
this is the effort that we expect in public administration hall you have to give one and a half hours a day from now until the exam for current affairs this is basically a requirement for public administration and gs also advantage is if you do this well you don't have to worry about current affairs ever again in gs also you will score well you understood any questions so far everybody is clear until now <coughs> so this is one part we need current affairs touch in most of the answers you will write something related to current affairs second expectation from upsc is high that means the syllabus of this subject is not very high it is a small subject the uh, actually the age of this subject itself is so far i think 120 130 years only 1887 to now probably 150 years so in 150 years whatever has happened is the entire subject but if you take bigger subjects geography political science two 2000 year old subject since then whatever has happened all the developments are part of syllabus because it is concise because the subject is small upsc expects depth depth means you should be very strong in the subject you understand so when you read the question you feel like they are expecting a lot of depth that is because there is not enough breadth that means there is not enough there is not a lot of things to study because of this reason expectation is high so what we have done is because upsc's expectation is high we have created a very comprehensive course here compared to any other classes that you take any other uh, optional probably they will usually take 200 to 250 hours but in insights public administration course is 300 to 320 hours what we have tried to do is minimize your effort outside the classroom um me and manjunath sir both have given five mains each with public administration optional that means there is 10 mains of experience with public administration optional we have attended classes we have written five test series separately and basically whatever our entire experience is we have distilled that into uh, the course that we do here so i mean ideally i don't suggest you to read anything else at all until you have a complete grip on what we are teaching in class because just using this you will be there in top 3% top 5% of all public admission students in the country people who are able to manage uh, to clear prelims they scored very well in public administration whoever have taken this course so the major challenge is actually clearing prelims if you clear prelims in public administration you will be in a good position if you do whatever we are asking you to so because expectation of upsc is depth we will also have strong depth in the class that means we will get into each topic in uh, you no know, high level of detail in the class itself i mean you don't have to read any other textbooks we have integrated there are seven textbooks that we have integrated everything into the notes we will give the notes ourselves so you that is your base notes that means that is the notes that you have to study properly and we have to you have to be able to put continuous effort to score well i already told you one and a half hours of current affairs every day you have to study apart from that whatever we teach in class this you have to continuously do revision so this is the effort um on an average consider around 2 to 2 and a half hours a day you have to spend for optional in fact any optional you take if you have to score around 300 plus you have to put in that kind of effort for public administration also it is mandatory that you have to put in 2 to 2 and a half hours a day so consider you spend 2 hours for public administration 1 and a half hour for optional so 3 and a half hours of effort should be consistent over a long period of time long period means here we are talking about probably next 8 months to 10 months you should be able to put this kind of effort so these are basically the challenges uh, because of public administration there is a general tendency that a uh, general belief that public administration is unable to score well in you can say in the market so this was actually true in 2013 14 this was true now it is no longer true 13 highest score was 231 and in 2014 highest score was 267 this is you can say uh, what used to happen was it was very easy to score in public administration 
and 70% of everybody, all the students, entire UPSC students used to take public administration. 70%. That means if 10,000 people are riding mains, 7,000 people used to take public administration. So UPSC felt that, why do we have a long list of optional, 26 optionals are there and everybody is taking public administration. So what they did was, they, they reduced the marks for public administration subject so that people started shifting to other, other options. Now, people are still afraid of public administration because in, two, in these two years, they reduced the marks so much so that less than 10% of the people now take public administration optional throughout the country. That means, if entirely around 10,000 students are writing mains, how many are taking public administration? Less than 1,000. So, around 1,000, it will be sometimes 1,000, 1,200. Right now, we have seen a trend like this. After this, there was there were other optionals also. Now, anthropology actually is one of the optional where a lot of people, entire South India actually takes anthropology. But the risk of this is, if four or five thousand people are taking single subject, we don't know when UPSC will target this subject and reduce the mark for that subject because they try to you know homogenize this entire thing. So, public administration is not at that risk now because number of students taking the subject is relatively less compared to earlier. You can see a continuous increase in trend of marks. Uh, in 2016, 334, this was actually highest in every subject. All subjects put together, number amount of marks that we got in public administration is highest. And after that also, usually the trend of marks, whatever highest, top 1% are there in every optional same score gets, you know, is there for public administration also. You understood this. Now there is one more thing in optional subject. UPSC does something called as scaling. Anybody knows about scaling? Scaling means, usually imagine somebody takes mathematics optional. It is easy to score in mathematics if they are good at it. It is very difficult to remove marks. People are getting 500 out of 500. Then, Imagine somebody takes literature subject. You have to write your own poem in literature and then also this professor will not give you marks. They will give 4 out of 10, 5 out of 10. That means literature student is getting 200 out of 500. Mathematics student is getting 500 out of 500. So, UPSC felt that it will be injustice to an entire optional if this continues. So, what they have done now is they will do, they will have some sort of statistical method to bring the scores to normal. This is called normalization of scores. That means even though actually professor has given 500 out of 500 for mathematics optional person, he will be brought to 250 or something. Actual score will be 250 when the score comes out. And literature person has got 200, this person's scores will also go to around that much 250, 260, etc. You understood? Because of scaling, now it actually does not matter whether an optional is performing well or not. All optionals actually are, you know, equal because in the end they will do scaling. It doesn't matter whether you score well in the subject, don't score well in the subject. Whether the subject is difficult, easy. If it is difficult, everybody scores less, then they will be scaled up. If it is a very easy subject, everybody scores high, then they will be scaled down. So that everybody is on an equal footing. This is what is scaling. You understand? UPSC has agreed in a RTI application, somebody filed that we are doing scaling for optional subjects. You understood? So, because there is scaling, you do not have to worry that which optional is performing better and which optional is performing worse. Now, it is not a concern anymore. What is the concern then? Why you should choose a particular optional? Why you should not choose a particular optional? Parameter on which you should choose an optional is the most important is you should have interest in the subject because this is a, this exam basically is it will take more than a year mains is one and a half years later whatever you are going to write and that means for the next one and a half years and if it is more than one attempt then probably two years three years you have to stick with that subject and you have to study every day for three years for such a long time on a same subject then if you don't have interest in the subject and if you just because it is performing well or somebody else said if you take it, then after six months you will get bored of it. 
you understood this you cannot stick with it for the long run if you don't have interest in a subject make sure that you are strong interest in a subject before you choose it if you don't have interest in the subject then whatever else other factors are there trend in scores yes it is relatively important and trend in scores was public administration as of now is doing well but like i said it is used to be important very important earlier but because of scaling it is not as important now the most important factor is whether you have strong interest in the subject or not then syllabus should not be too much usually uh, we don't recommend some subjects particularly geography if you are considering i think if you talk to vinay sir he used to tell us also to not take uh, some particular subjects because not because in exam it will be difficult for you to study the subject itself it will be difficult because the sheer size of the subject is very large so same thing we will also recommend basically to students whatever i was a student basically i was in core batch um, after giving first mains i came to insects and uh, i mean i did not attend ogp batch but i attended core batch so basically when i sir asked us i mean he whatever he told us same type of similar type of guidelines even now they are applicable some subjects don't take engineering optional like mechanical engineering civil engineering you have to study four years of entire syllabus to write on that one day uh, and that is very difficult to do revision similarly don't take uh, you know these type of subjects also geography also is very large type of subject. choose subjects which have concise syllabus that means there should be limited syllabus um basically public administration sociology anthropology these subjects have relatively less syllabus compared to others then overlap with gs there are some subjects public administration has a huge overlap political science little less and sociology little lesser than that so this is basically overlap with gs among overlap with gs public administration wins we already saw there is overlap with three gs subjects overall then availability of material and guidance public administration used to be the most popular optional because of this reason we have a clear idea on what actually gets score in public administration how you should write an answer what you should study how or you should not study everything will clear you know teach you in class itself clearly so you don't have any doubts it means you don't need to worry what should i do if you take some vague optional which nobody else takes only 20 people are taking some uh, some particular subject then you won't have clarity on what should i do because there is not enough material there is not there are not enough mentors there is not enough information at all even on the internet about this subject so don't take so those subjects because you won't have clarity on what exactly you should do this is you can say the parameters on which you should take optional some people ask me whether we should take coaching for optional my opinion on this matter is uh, for optional it is important that you take coaching for gs also actually you can manage without coaching because gs expectation is 12th standard level maybe up to some graduation level but optional expectation is masters level if you read um, whatever they have given notification properly they will they would have written clearly that bachelors and above level is necessary for uh, you can say optional that means whichever optional you take you should be able to compete with a person who has done masters in you can say that particular subject then you will be able to score well you understood this and why you should take coaching for optional because just by reading book you won't be able to understand up to masters level first thing second thing upsc expects a certain kind of orientation orientation means consider a example consider somebody does who does research on drugs which drug works well for a which patient which particular tablet works well for which disease this person is a researcher consider a doctor doctor is also studying the same subject this researcher is also studying the same subject but there is a difference in orientation on how they are studying the subject you understood researcher is studying it only from one perspective for his, to help his research doctor is studying it from only one perspective how to make sure that practically i can cure this patient of this disease 
you understood your orientation is that of a practitioner you are more like the doctor rather than the researcher because your job is administration you are not expected to do research and write your own theories your expectation is very simple from upsc you understand what this researcher is saying which tablet works for which disease and as a doctor you make sure that you give the tablet to this patient so that it is resolved that means lot of researchers have done research on public administration and they have written down lot of things what you should do is as a practitioner somebody who practices administration you should understand what they are saying and use it to you can say get results in the real world this is the orientation of a practitioner if you just read the book you won't know how to write an answer from the orientation of whether researcher or practitioner and that is some that is a skill that you will learn only based on attending class but if you are reading history and writing it in exam there it won't matter much or if you are reading even polity if you read lakshmikanth well you can still answer you can say uh, questions there but in optional subject it is important that you take coaching because of these reasons whichever optional it is you have to probably attend uh, classes because that will give you an edge compared to people who have not done it you understood this any questions so far <coughs> so right reason for the cho for choosing the optional what i would recommend the most important reason is you have to identify whether you have interest in the subject or not it will help you work in difficult times difficult times means when you are bored when you are not able to focus right now initially usually everybody has enthusiasm for 3 4 months they will do very well but it is somewhere in the middle when you feel exam is still 6 months away and right now you are feeling bored at that time there is breaks in preparation people want to watch movies or tv shows they want to binge watch it they want to go out on trips they want to go back to home at this point if you have interest in the subject then only basically you will be able to uh, you know continue it if you don't have interest in the subject then you will get bored at this point you understood this then it help you explore know and understand better we will teach something in class you will become curious about a point because you are interested more in it then you will do search and you will find that some other country something else like this happened if you maybe write that down in notes because of your own interest you are able to add extra value in your answer and you will get half mark one mark more you understood if you don't have interest in the subject this won't happen then you will not feel difficult even when you put in effort i already told you that it requires effort every day consistent effort if you are doing something you don't like then it will feel like effort when you are watching a movie will it feel like effort no because you already like it and that is why you should take a subject which you like even though you are putting in effort it won't feel like you are putting in effort you will start liking it and you will enjoy the subject um, and this will actually translate to marks because you have already invested so much time and you have a strong understanding of the subject so how will you know whether you have an interest in the subject or not for that you have to go through the syllabus that means imagine you are now narrowed down to two or three subjects take the uh, notification go through the syllabus thoroughly you have to go through the syllabus and understand what each word is you should know one to line one to two lines about what each word present is this will take time usually nobody does it i will tell every batch but nobody does it because it takes 3 4 hours of effort but this is an important decision whatever you are going to take with regard to optional because it is 500 worth marks worth of you can say uh, in a, in mains it is worth 500 marks and that means it's a very important decision whatever you are taking a lot of people they take this uh, you can say subject even in optional classes also some people want to shift from you can say other subjects psi or sociology to public administration public administration to literature whatever it is but after you know two or three months if you are trying to shift that means you already put in a huge amount of effort all that is now waste the amount of time that you have spent is waste so to prevent this it is better that you put the effort initially itself consider you have to totally put in some 15 to 20 hours of effort to identify which optional i have to take if you have this reference in your mind then it becomes much easier you understand and even if you are worst case in your if you are giving multiple attempts second attempt third attempt then if you stick to the same optional it makes it you know live your life much easier 
you already have everything notes ready properly and all the things are at one place and you can just do revision at that time there is nothing else necessary you understood so choosing an option is somewhat like getting married if you don't have clear clarity on you know the person then it is not a good idea to get married at this place you know at that point because getting divorced later and getting remarried is a huge amount of effort and that is not something that we recommend for option you understood this so make sure you understand the subject properly syllabus properly and then choose the option so take last 10 years previous papers after you understand the you can say syllabus thoroughly if you take last 10 years papers and if you look at it you will start creating some links here you don't have total understanding of the subject just some rough idea okay this is the question and it relates to some aspect of this you can say this topic you will start getting this rough idea and then you will know whether i want to study this subject or not whether i have interest in this type of things or not so earlier i already told you what the pattern is out of eight questions you have to answer how many questions five questions earlier there was a situation where out some chapters we could skip because we have choice in the questions but now what they have done is they have shuffled all the questions you don't know which chapter question comes in which question you know which particular question it is not like your college exam where uh, there are eight chapters eight questions one chapter one question it's not like that we don't know which question comes from which chapter how many marks come from which chapter we have rough idea but we don't know you can see how uh, choice works out because of this reason we have to study every chapter we cannot skip any chapter but every chapter need not be given equal attention because most amount of questions are coming from uh, bigger chapters where there is conceptual aspects so we need understanding of all subject i mean all topics but priority of all the topics is not the same the first four units uh, whatever we are going to discuss more than half the marks come from that only four units because they are very large units and there is a lot of conceptual aspects if you take question papers you can see that more than half the questions are coming from only these four chapters so we'll also spend more time on those so that you will get very strong understanding of those chapters you understood this so uh we'll just briefly see what is there in syllabus first chapter is introduction the chapter name itself is introduction as the name suggests it is like a trailer to the movie that means if you if you understand this introduction chapter very well it is like a bird's eye view of the entire subject basically you will know what the entire subject is about um and any question that is asked you can already give one or two points about it just like after watching a trailer you will know whether this is a comedy movie or horror movie you understand that is basically the objective of this introduction chapter if you sit through introduction if you have thorough idea of introduction then other things will become easier because you will know where in this introduction where to put each of this chapter you will have a broader idea and other things will become somewhat easier so introduction chapter is very important lot of questions directly come from this also and apart from that every other chapter is linked to this introduction under which part which fo it falls you will be able to understand and you will be able to answer question then second is administrative thought there are some thinkers like i said public administration as a subject is around 150 years old people have created all these theories i gave an example a medical researcher will identify which drug works for uh, you can say which disease similarly some thinkers have identified okay if you are a particular administrator imagine you are a district collector and a lot of people are working under you there are 300 people but whatever you say they are not doing it that means the problem is motivation the problem is authority and that means somebody has you can say basically studied what motivates people and so this is basically administrative thought administrative behavior you can see we will study motivation theories moral what motivates people how you can motivate them that means if you are a leader how you can be a good leader that is you can say theories of leadership how you can motivate people is motivation theory how you can make better decisions is decision making theory so basically what we study here is all the other i mean all the researchers who have given you can say you can uh, models this is a problem you are facing you don't know how to take a decision at this point so they have done you can say research on this on how we can help you make a better decision at this point and once you study that you will be able to make better decisions much more easily you understood 
So in administrative thought, we will study about these are all people who have given these suggestions or given these models and theories. And you will also study what their theories are in detail also, so that you have clarity on how you can become a better administrator. Then organizations. So um, basically government is an organization. You would have heard of the word, but anybody knows what is the meaning of organization? Just common sense me. Arranging in proper order also organization, yes, that is also correct. But for our purposes, organization is like a, you can say, um, if multiple people are coming together, police department is an organization. There are a lot of people in this police station, they are working towards a common goal. What is the common goal of police department? Maintaining law and order and investigating if there are any particular, you can say, crimes. This is their common goal. Among them, there are clear relationships. What is the relationship in police among the people, among those policemen? There is a superior and subordinate relationship or not? There is a superior. So this is basically an organization. Multiple people coming together, they are trying to work for a common goal. They have relationships among them. This is an organization. Why do we need organizations? Because there are some things that one person cannot do. Multiple people are necessary. When multiple people are necessary and they are trying to achieve the common goal, everywhere it becomes an organization. Government is not the only organization, anything, even an NGO is an organization. Because they are also multiple people coming together to achieve a goal. Even a private sector is an organization. So, we will study how organizations work and if, if an organization is not working well, ISRO is working very well, but DRDO is not as successful. So, we will identify exactly what is missing in DRDO that is present in ISRO and how we can make organizations work well. Because your job once you clear the exam will be to head each organization. Sometimes you are head of a district, sometimes you are head of you can say something else, human rights commission and something. So all these particular organizations you have to make them work well. Without understanding what they are you cannot make them work well. You understood? This is basically fourth unit. Like I said, these are the first four units where more than 50% of your paper one marks come from these particular you know, topics. After this, much easier topics are there, which are relatively commonsensical and easy to understand also. And uh, smaller, uh, you can say, chapters also. Accountability and control. Anybody knows what is accountability? You are responsible and you are answerable also. Answerable means somebody, imagine when you are a kid, your mother asked you to look after your brother or sister and she went out. You are accountable means, imagine your brother put something on his uh, leg and he is hurt. Your mother will ask you, what were you doing? This is answerability. Answerability is also along with responsibility. Answerability is also there. That is what is accountability. In government, anybody who is working, they are answerable. They are answerable to who? They are superior, higher authorities. They are answerable to media politicians who will direct them, they are answerable to CVC and CAG. So, a lot of, you can say, institutions are there which will hold government accountable. So that there is no corruption and so that they will achieve what their goals are. This is accountability and control. You can see, basically, legislature is holding executive accountable. In polity, you would study that. Same thing we will study in much more depth. The judiciary is holding uh, whatever government does accountable. So, these are all accountability mechanisms. What are all the ways with which you can say government is held accountable? Then administrative law. Administrative law means there are there are some nuances there, but in little simple meaning, let us think of administrative law as law that deals only with administration. There are some laws which are not for all normal people, only for officers. They have created some laws. Consider Prevention of Corruption Act. Who can actually involve in corruption? They have defined the public servant as a keyword there. Public servant means somebody who is working in government service. Only for those people, Prevention of Corruption Act will apply. And that is administrative law. You understood this? There are other aspects also, delegated legislation, others. You will see, you can say later in when you get into the depth of the subject. But right now, you can remember administrative law as law that is applicable only for, you can say, officers. Not applicable for normal people. You understand? Then, comparative public administration. This is common sense. Looking at the title, what can you tell me about it? 
Comparative means what? We will compare, basically we will compare uh, Indian administration with administration in UK, USA, France, etc. We will see if something is working well there, we will bring it to India and we will implement. <coughs> Cash transfer schemes were brought from Brazil. Bolsa Familia was a scheme in Brazil which we implemented in India. And now direct benefit transfer or whatever is happening. So this is how comparative public administration works. Somebody else is facing same and similar problem like us. How are they solving the problem? Is it working there? If it is working there, maybe we can bring it and implement in India. This is comparative public administration. This is not just from other countries. In some states, some you can say they are, in, they are you know creating good solutions to problem. If in one state it is working, can we scale it up to the you know can say entire country? Midday meal scheme was first introduced in Tamil Nadu. We felt that okay, this is a good scheme which will encourage children to come to school after a small nutrition. So we expanded it to the entire country. You understood? This is basically comparative public administration. Then development dynamics. So here basically everybody knows literal meaning of development. There is progress happening in the country. Everybody also knows that there is developing country and developed country. Can you give example of a developed country? USA, UK, France, Germany, these are developed countries. Administration in developing and developed countries cannot be same. Because developed countries, they already have everything they need. What they will try to do is try to maintain things as it is. Not much change. Because if everything is good, why should we change anything? But developing countries, everything is not yet good here. We have to change a lot of things. So developing countries are change oriented in nature. We have to change a lot of things. So development dynamics means administration that is suitable for developing countries. You will study in detail here. Because India is a developing country and we have to change a lot of things. And when you get into service, you are also responsible for all these changes. So this is basically development dynamics. Administration is, you can say, you have already studied about administration. Now specifically for developing countries like India, how we can modify it in such a way that it will become change oriented is development dynamics. You understood? So personnel administration, personnel means people. How government recruits people, how government trains them, how government decides whether to give promotion to this person, transfer to this person, how they decide to you know, remove some people. This is, you can say, personal administration. Ultimately, government tries to attract good talent, so the talented people will get into government and they are able to achieve whatever goals of government are. They want to retain good talent, they don't want people to leave government somewhere in the middle, resign, etc. And they want to remove people who are, you can say, corrupt or not working, etc. How can they do this, all these things easily? If they give decent salary only, then they can attract good talent. If they make sure that, you can say, there is fairness in whatever decision making, then people will not leave. Imagine there is a dispute. They, you know, whatever judgment has to be fair. This is basically personal administration. You understand? Then public policy. Um, public policy is very simple. Whatever government makes laws, policies, etc. This is policy. How they make this policy, what is the process and basically uh, all the models with which they can make policy you will study here. So there are last two chapters here uh, in paper one. One is techniques of administrative improvement. It doesn't require any explanation at all, it is simple English. What does it mean? Right now we are following some sort of process in administration. How can we improve it? These are basically techniques. These techniques we have borrowed from um, MBA syllabus. Basically, they are trying to improve how the company works. Similarly, we can also improve how government works, business, similar, similar type of techniques. Then, financial administration. This I already spoke that there is overlap between Indian economy and this financial administration. Here, you will study about the money element, how government gets money. What is the major source of money for government? Tax. They will take this tax and in the budget they will spend this money on defense and you can say home affairs and agriculture and such other thing. How this process happens? This is what you will study in financial administration. You understood? So basically what you are studying all this entire thing is um, about a single organization. Which is the organization we are studying? It is government. Basically we will although we have organizational theory and how organizations work. Our area of interest is 
basically only one that is how government works and how we can make it work better all these theories and all these chapters whatever we are studying they are looking at the government from different directions consider for example you would have shared, heard a story of uh, five blind men they come they approach the elephant they touch the elephant one person touches its tummy and says elephant is like a wall another person says touch a tail and he says it is like a rope etc but none of them have the, the whole picture of the elephant why are we studying so many chapters so many theories we are trying to understand from different blind man's perspective what their what their idea of elephant is so that we can see the whole picture of the elephant you understand when you understand everybody's perspective then you will see how government works in you can say in totality completely so that you have a better understanding compared to any one of them that is the objective of studying all these theories and all these chapters this is paper 1 i will take mostly paper 1 some chapters where there is you can say similar type of topics in paper 2 we will merge them together and i will take them in paper 1 uh, and some of them paper 1 topics which have links with paper 2 manjira sir will take you can say those chapters so this is paper 1 syllabus paper 2 syllabus from here uh, manjira sir will discuss this so far if you have any questions you can ask what is an average score in public administration we just discussed this uh, average score is not very different from any other subject right now they are all almost similar uh, because there is scaling in subjects you can expect to score last year i think last 2 to 3 years 280 290 was a you can say was the highest score in most of the optionals and in public administration also highest scores are same before that 300 310 320 was also you can say possible and in public administration also you, you know some students got these level of scores i am confused between public administration and psir how to find out which is good um which is good basically there is no good or bad you like i said what is your interest area public administration's focus is more on like i said i gave example of a doctor who will actually solve the problem i mean doctor is concerned with this patient and how i can solve the problem they don't read how this research was done and how they came up with this drug etc their interest is this drug solves this problem and they go to the next problem they will try to solve that this is the doctor's role and that is what public administration does our focus is on solving people's problems in real world whereas political science will deal with how research is done basically how they came up with this drug and uh, you can say basically there are philosophies what is democracy and what is um, liberty what each person since socrates until now they have all said about each of these things so this is more theoretical in nature public administration is more practical in nature there is nothing wrong in studying any one of them it depends upon your interest if you are more inclined towards you can say theoretical type of um, orientation you can take a political science if you are interested more on practical type of orientation you can take public administration what you are interested to study is more important is public administration a good choice for commerce students uh it, there is no i mean it won't matter which which uh, student you are commerce student medical student engineering student because everybody is at the same place when you start studying public administration nobody has actually done any degree on public administration and come here so you don't have to worry about your what your graduation background is so any questions no questions everybody is able to understand what what i am discussing so <coughs> manjinath sir will continue from paper 2 syllabus
Okay. <coughs> Good morning, all. So by now you would have got a fair idea, right? So what is the optional, the syllabus, at least the broader part of it, right? Yeah. So as the Shelley sir discussed, so broadly, if you want to identify what public administration deals with, it is about what, how the government functions. Of course, a lot of things you would have studied in. Uh, you, we will discuss in polity also. For example, if you can see the here, look at it. See, so whatever topics that you study, recall obviously we will study about your parliament, judiciary, uh, president, prime ministers, all those prime ministers. What we will not study here, I mean in your polity is for example, we will not study about cabinet secretariat in detail in polity. We will not study about PMO in detail. PMO means what? Prime minister's office. We will not study about what do you call as this attached officers, all those things in detail there. But obviously it's under state relation related issues, means what federalism or how government of India functions, state government functions, remember federalism issues, cooperative federalism, competitive federalism, in case polity is done, obviously you will have a fair idea by now, all those ones, plus obviously in addition to that, parliament, judiciary, president, prime ministers, chief ministers, centre state, in other words, governor related issues, all of that also you have to study, a lot of overlapping will be there, finance commission, what is that role? Uh, judiciary related problems like judicial activism, judicial overreach, all those obviously those points will also repeat. Three to four chapters will be a lot of overlap between here and uh, which on uh, polity, fine. But obviously, Shalesar has he explained, <coughs> see, this will be in the beginning you have to understand all these things. And if you can recall, uh, who is famously considered as the father of public administration? So, Woodrow Wilson is considered as the father of public administration. Woodrow Wilson was actually one of the, what do you call as this, former presidents of United States. Like how you have so many, like how you have Joe Biden now, he was one of the former president of United States called as Woodrow Wilson. See, for a long time what happened, so public administration and political science were not separate things. It was largely considered as what, overall how it is about government. Gradually they started to realize, then we will explain all these things when we, when we discuss how public administration as an optional originated all those things. So, in 19th century, means 1887, all during that time, they started to realize that there used to be something called as in US, spoils system. Spoils system means in simple terms, whoever used to win the election, they used to bring the entire team with them. Entire team means what? Let's say for example, you look at uh, what do you call as this Indian context. Last year, obviously, you had elections in Karnataka. Obviously, CMs changed, ministers changed. Did all the bureaucrats who were functioning also change? Bureaucrats, maximum what may happen, transfers may happen. But did the entire bureaucracy change? Bureaucracy will remain the same. Who will come and go? Ministers will keep coming based on the elections. Parties will come in, uh, parties, new parties will come or new, same party may stay or whatever it is. But spoil system means literally it is like what? If a new president was elected in US, he will bring his own entire team along with what? Bureaucrats. Now that means what? Obviously there was no kind of permanency. And they, they had realized in US that what? It, is, it was very easy to make changes in the law. But what was it easy? I mean what was it difficult? it was becoming very difficult to implement them. See, it is very easy to tell, okay, this is there in the constitution, this is there in so and so law, this is there in so, that is very easy, but what is very difficult? How to actually implement it on ground? For example, it is very easy to tell that we will ensure so and so growth, we will ensure 5 trillion dollar economy by 20, how will you implement it? How will you, how will you realize it? That is the biggest challenge, right? Those, those biggest challenges are the actually, what you call it as public administration. And so, those ideas, that is how the idea started, okay, it is, it is, uh, what, it is becoming very easy to frame a constitution rather than to run a constitution, they realized. Then he came up with the idea called as, whatever, that all technical points we will discuss later, that is how the uh, concept of public administration started. Till then, everything was same. And so, later they started to realize, we need a separate concept for it. That is when gradually over a period of time, so, so many things you have, so they would have, uh, Shailesh would have briefed about, Thinkers like Taylor, Weber, so many people are there, the idea of bureaucracy, leadership, motivation, gradually everything starts to develop. For example, if in case you have heard, there is a very famous thinker, let's see for example, they have not mentioned the name here, there is a thinker called as Maslow, Abraham Maslow. You know what he says, for everybody, everybody's needs will keep changing. Why, what he calls it as, Arva, I mean like let's say he uses a kind of pyramid, lower level of pyramid is what he calls it as physiological need. Simple example. See, in the beginning, everybody will want, but let's say, for example, you are very, very poor. So, then what do you will expect? So, I need, let's say, I need a very basic job or before that, what I need? I need to take care of my food. I need to take care of my shelter. I need to take care of my clothing. So, physiological needs, basic food, clothing, shelter. 
then you will start thinking about what security needs means okay fine i have a basic job now i should make sure that my job is permanent or it is secure i should make sure that if i have a house that house is permanent my life is secure that is second level they call it as security needs then if we, all these needs are met then you will start thinking about okay fine job is there house is there everything i need kind of social respect i need my neighbors i need my relatives to treat me well they should give me respect that is kind of social need then comes your kind of recognition need okay i should achieve something i should only make a project i should i should lead that project i should start my own company i should i should make it success so that is kind of what kind of recognition needs now he says beyond that also there will be some need he calls it as what so metaphysical need or what do you call it as completely beyond typical human needs means what it is not about what society thinks of you or all those things i should get happiness from what i do pleasure in what i do for example you like for example what painting so you should start paint or you like such as for example writing a book you want to become a writer so try to derive pleasure from what you do so these are like different needs he i just as identified that's called as typically hierarchy of needs you know so same thing actually you can apply it for each and everybody let's say for example today because you want a job you'll be thinking about first i need a job then let's say for example when you get into job obviously what you start thinking okay now i have a job so i should make sure i, I should get uh, other things now then what you will start thinking okay i need very good position now and then achievement all these aspects you will start thinking that is what indirectly i mean directly what he says is that abraham maslow's hierarchy of needs need hierarchy that all you will study it's a type of motivation theory like that so many are there you will understand over a period of time similarly accountability and control so many times even in polity if you can recall we keep talking about something called as rti right to information we'll talk we'll talk uh, something about uh, social audit citizens charter how media makes you accountable so so many things are there all of them fake news what do you mean by fake news what do you mean by paid news those are all part of your accountability and control remember we keep using a term called as pressure group look at what the farmers are doing the haryana and punjab farmers they are trying to get into delhi all the, those are all what basically they are called as pressure groups so that is partly part of your what they have written a word called as their interest groups by in can pressure groups put a pressure on the government obviously as we called 2 to 3 years back even whatever farm bills that the government had passed what, what did prime minister modi do he took them back he repealed the farm bills because of the pressure by the farmers groups so those are all obviously pressure groups only how do they function what is the definition of all of them that all we have to study indirectly in polity remember we study a topic called as 323a 323b tribunals the tribunals in detail you have to study a little more in detail it will overlap but in detail in remember we keep using a word called as delegated legislation when ideally who should make laws legislature should make laws this is typical typical separation of power legislature executive judiciary but so many times legislature will not have that level of time or expertise that's why what they'll do they will make the basic law details everything they'll leave it to whom bureaucracy that is technically called as delegated remember we keep using i mean in case parties and you have any delegation what do you mean by delegation transfer legislature is transferring it to executive rules regulations notifications government order those are all delegated legislation remember this famous statement that we used that legislature makes the skeleton bureaucracy makes the blood and flesh that is called as delegated legislation that again we have to study in detail because in polity what we'll do we'll only tell this is what you mean by delegated legislation these are the examples here why did it emerge what are the different types then what is the importance of it what if it is misused how to make sure that it is not misused all of those things in detail you will be studying it here and so that is broadly what you call as administrative law and then obviously as, as personal administration is very again very what you call as this um, curious topic see for example you have a words like position classification rank classification technical details will discuss basic point what does that mean let's say for example let you 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 get you clear this exam civil service exam once you become ias it means what throughout the career you will have the tag with you when which position are you working in which department are you working in doesn't matter you will always have that so and so x person ias because that means that is a tag kind of a one that is actually called as what rank classification okay so position classification is one rank classification another one that technical keyword they are not mentioned rank means what it is there you have been allocated a rank that will stay with you throughout your career that is called as rank classification position means what 
your position your salary everything depends on what are you doing when you get ias or ips rank what does that mean it doesn't matter what are you doing you will keep getting the same salary but position means what it depends on what is your role what is a what is a function that you are doing based on that they'll pay you here it's not like that rank means what fix once you get ias it's done throughout your life 30 35 years it's same why is that what do we follow what do, what do they follow in developed countries all those details including how bureaucracy gets you know how transfers are politicized training if you have heard in india they famously criticize that training is a paid holiday paid holiday look at the word what do you mean by that means you whenever training happens you go there they'll pay you but you are not going to learn anything you just have to go meet your batchmates and come back literally unfortunately it has become like that that's why it is criticized as what paid holiday it's like a holiday for you for which you are also paid fine so that's all criticisms one so all those details you have to study so that all will take care don't worry so and then obviously a lot of public policy makings are there marxist model rational model incremental model like that in addition recall look at it evolution of indian administration remember we keep telling kautilya sarta shastra even in politics sometimes i refer to word called as if you have heard matsya nyaya matsya nyaya means law of the fish so rich will dominate for that kind of a one that all details what did he talk about it if you can recall kautilya very famously says in arta shastra that bureaucrat civil servants are like fish in water you will never get to know how much water does a fish drink you will never get to know how much corruption does a civil servant do that's why you have to be very very cautious about them so for that in fact remember his seller was mentioning about prevention of corruption act in prevention of corruption act they have mentioned only 27 types of corruption kautilya in artha shastra had mentioned 40 types of corruption when this is i am talking 2500 years back that means imagine even whenever the state has existed bureaucracy existed always problems have been there so how to tackle that what should we do for it all those things obviously in detail we'll study use a so many words for the drakshana palana this that yoga kshema raj dharma all of those in details we have to study about kautilyan angle similarly if in case ancient medieval then for most of you mostly ancient medieval might have been done right if in case obviously for those who have been done there you will study so many things cultural angle all those things but he will also study but only from administration perspective for example you might have heard they would have referred to a term called as that um, uh, akbar introduced a system called as mansabdari system that mansabdari system we have to study in detail here and so zat savar like that so many keywords are there why uh, i mean what is the concept of this mansabdari system how did it evolve so all those details we'll study in look at the word mughal administration and then british legacy i don't even have to tell just imagine the exam that you are writing civil service exam lord macaulay committee find the idea of civil service first of all the idea of ias the idea of ips the idea of a police first of all in india till british emerged separate police department itself was not there normally army and police were all combined right from indian history for a long time british created a separate concept called as okay we need someone to provide to protect right from external threats that is what indirectly army we need someone else for whom to tackle the internal problems internal means understand right the problems within here that is indirectly what your policing that was started after your 1857 war because they keep telling in modern 1857 first war of independence is that everything that is when the british realized okay probably if we had a police kind of a one we could have prevented these kind of revolts because army mostly focused on what external problems if in case you you had someone like this you could have prevented the internal problems that's when they came up with that idea and so that is that's why look at it we have mentioned here something called as this one law and order administration that's what we have to discuss in detail there we don't discuss so much of in detail here we have to discuss in detail what do you mean by police saying what are hierarchy are there now if you look at indian police you start from constable if you take till dgp director general of police 11 to 12 layers at least 10 to 12 layers of hierarchy you have means if you start from constable head constable asi si inspectors dvsp sp dig ig and then uh, what do you call as this uh, commissioners and then dgp above dgp you will have home minister that means you live home minister is a minister bureaucracy itself will have 10 to 12 levels of hierarchy in other words police how will you handle that first of all why did we create that level of hierarchy there are so many british angle are there for example even today if you look at police 90% of them are asi constable head constable 
right? Eight to nine percent are up to the level of DYSP. Yeah, DYSP, SP, and above is just one, probably one point five percent. Why is this? Because British created this system. Because logically, you think you cannot bring too many British people to come and uh, handle it here, right? Imagine how much of empires they had. India was not the, of course, India was the major empire, no doubt. But what India is not the only empire. Imagine how many African countries they were ruling. Sri Lanka they were ruling. So many other countries they were ruling. So they they wanted few people only to bring here, and using those people they wanted to control Indians. Simple words. What British did was they created a what do you call this large pyramidical base. Whatever all these constable at constables who will they put here? They put Indians. So all these SP, DSP, all those above one will be what British. They will take the decision. Indians have to implement it. That itself is the relationship. Same system, unfortunately, even today we keep continuing. So fine. So a lot of committees have told we cannot continue with this system. Please reform it. Right from the Ramvira Commission of 1978 till Supreme Court's Prakashing guidelines, so many are there. KD Thomas Committee. Unfortunately, it is still the same. And so, why is it like that? All of those details we will study in something called as law and order administration. And so. Yeah, similarly, for example, this one obviously I don't have to explain. Look at it: district administration since independence. In simple terms, role of DC. How did the concept of district collector emerge? Fine, it started way back. In fact, if you can recall, it started in 1772. You might have heard a person called as Lord Warren Hastings. Lord Warren Hastings started it 1772. Gradually, over a period of time, it has gone through a lot of changes. Understood? So that is the point. How? How was it before independence? How did it change after independence? Because during British era, absolutely DC was so powerful. Even now it is there, but lot of things have changed. Because British era, there was no democracy, there was no election, there was no concept of what uh, people's representative. But obviously now, what are we post independence? Constitution, democracy, elections, media, so many things are there. So obviously bureaucracy will not be so powerful. But even today, if you have seen, even during British era also, even now, I mean during British era, if you have heard. DC was famously called as what Little Napoleon. DC was called as what it, it, DC was referred to as tortoise on whose on whose what do you call as this uh, what do you call as this back the entire Indian administration rest. There's very famous statement like uh, not even a sparrow not even a sparrow should die in the district without DC without it coming to the notice of DC. That means imagine what to what extent does it describe? Winston Churchill used to say that what. That Indians will not remember British for this reason or that reason. Indians will remember British for the office of DC. Why do you think? Obviously, most of you are here. DC. So DC is where the major picture, major every kind of image is there. Of course, few boys will have a what a picture of SP. All those, all those uh, I understand. But largely, no office, no service can uh, what he calls this replace or even match up to even 50 percent of IAS because. British had created that office in such a way. Same thing continues even today, with lot of changes also. But that kind of aura, that image, still unfortunately or fortunately, whatever the issue is, continues. That is what you call as district administration. We have to study in detail. Clear? So like that, so many aspects will be there, including this is again your typical what polity, which is in other words what panchayats, municipalities. Seventy-third amendment, seventy-fourth amendment, little more in detail. Because obviously there we will study. Only what you call this kind of superficially in polity, only from major so and so constitution perspective. Here we have to go. Of course, that will overlap, no doubt about it. In the in a, a little more in depth, maybe 50, 60 percent will be the same. A little more. For example, here you have written a topic called as global local debate, neo localism, all those things. That all we don't study there. You have to study it in new here. But the core details of municipalities, panchayats will remain the same. Similarly, in addition to this, look at the word significant issues in Indian administration means what? See, everybody keeps on telling that what we'll make sure that zero corruption is that everything. So, what do you mean by corruption? What do you mean? What are the different types of it? Why it keeps on continuing? All those details we have to study, right, from Cotillion era till here, how things have changed. See, for example, we normally equate corruption with bribe. Bribe means what? Like, say, when you offer hundred rupee, two hundred rupee, or five hundred rupee, or whatever, if you go to RDO, you may pay pay thousand rupees, or if you get stuck in traffic, all those things you may pay hundred or two hundred or five hundred, depending on issues. Those are all simple bribe. Bribe is a type of corruption. Bribe itself is not corruption. Bribe means what? You are actually literally offering a kind of a cash. There are so many other things. So corruption is a broad term. So then, what is bribe then? One of the type of it. 
though which is very common one. Now, those all types of things in detail we have to study. In addition to that, obviously, what for example, even in polity, you might have heard we keep referring to what NHRC, National Human Rights Commission, State Human Rights Commission. Even in, for example, remember we keep studying generations of human rights, first generation, second generation, third generation, all those in detail we have to study. In addition to this, one of the topic is a overlap with your even GS3. Remember in GS3, you study in detail a topic called as disaster management. There in GS3, what you will study? Why a disaster happens, why landslide happens, why cyclone happens, the geographical reasons also you will study. We will not study geographical reason here. How to handle a disaster? That we will study, administration part. Like for example, you might have seen regularly, imagine how many disasters keep happening. Last one, one and a half year back, you had urban floods in Bangalore. Fine, so you had floods last year in what do you call as they say in Delhi also. Uttarakhand, you had flash floods kind of a one. Fine, so kind of earthquakes you will have, all those things. How do you handle them when you have a disaster? Those details also you will be studying. That is called as disaster management policy, disaster management act, COVID kind of a things. How do we handle? What administrative principles work there? You might think they'll tell you even there. Kyogo framework, Yokohama framework, Sendai framework, like that. So many things are there. There are a lot of overlap will be there with your that uh, GS3. Then this in a way overlap with your paper one, which is what budget related things, monetary policy. Remember in economy they'll keep telling repo rate, reverse repo rate. What RBA does, central bank does is called as monetary policy. Fine, what uh, budget is called as what? Fiscal policy. What is the relationship between both? How both are important for macroeconomic uh, management? What is the role of auditing, CAG audits? That all in details, this here and there you have to combine. So, because in paper only you have a chapter called as financial administration. That one will be overlapped with financial ma management. Fine. In paper one, you have a chapter called as personal administration. That and which one? Civil services. Both are combined. There it is in general. Here, paper two means what? Indian administration. Paper one is largely theory. Paper two is largely Indian administration. So, both you have to keep combining. Understood? And then obviously, this all I don't have to explain. You will be having a fair idea. So, we have already written all these things. Daily practices, all those ones. So normally by timing you will be knowing, so they have already fixed the optional timing 7 to 10, so some or 7 30 to 10, it depends on the timings one. So we will combine all those, that all I will not explain because those are all very easy ones. Sources, sir what should I do now, because probably we will be starting uh, P, uh, what do you call this, public administration by April 1st. Fine, we will announce all those details, but you can take it as April 1st week or April 1st only, fine. Now, sir from now on, like say today is what 15, 16 probably, so it's another two weeks if in case. <coughs> I have to go through anything, what should I do? Simple, go on online, you will find PDFs of IGNO BA Public Administration. IGNO means what? Indira Gandhi National Open University. So, there it is for simple reference. Fine. So, BA Public Administration, basic chapter you will get, introduction chapter or administrative theories chapter. For your basic understanding, you can go start reading. It is a very, very simple English like how you study NCRT. It is more or less that level of language. You can easily get a hold. At least you will get a fair idea. Okay, this is what is public administration. Understood? IGNO, BA public administration, basic chapters, if in case you have to go through for the next 10-15 uh, days. So, you will have an idea before you come to the classes. Okay, this is what is all about maybe uh, public admission. And then obviously, so go through the syllabus also, go through PYQs, you will get an understanding. But sometimes you will not get that level of in-depth understanding, you will not get. But at least basic idea. Understood. Other books you do not have to buy now itself. Obviously, we will tell you. Most important one as of now, what they have done. So, Radha Binod Aribam. Now, he is also an AS. He has cleared with public administration, he has cleared and he has got into the service. So, uh, Mohit Bhattacharya, this Prasad and Prasad, Rajin, Arora and Goyal, all of them are very good books. From there, what he has done, Aribam, he has combined it and he has made his own book. He has not written completely new on his own. What he has done? He has combined Bhattacharya, thinkers, this, that, everything, and he has made the book called as. Paper 1 for paper 1 and paper 2, Radha Binod Aribam. You just have to buy that. Other things depending on the chapters. Do not you don't start studying Mohit Bhattacharya and Prasad and Prasad now itself, if in case you have already bought it. Because it is very, very theoretical. English will be, uh, for example, little more, uh, what do you call this, uh, you know, kind of a you know, hi-fi kind of a language they try to use. Do not study Bhattacharya and Prasad now itself. At least not before you start the classes. You will get confused. Fine. So, because theoretical approach is there. You now it is only what IGNO BA public administration 
for your references. Second ARC, all those things that start, don't study now. We will discuss which are which are, because not all the second ARC reports are important. Few of them are important. Which one, how to study all those things over a period of time when we deal with the chapters, we will discuss that. Clear? Don't, don't jump into them all of, all of a sudden now itself. Yeah, then, so obviously you might have continuously you might have heard, keep on hurting that why, what do you call as this, what kind of answers all those, uh, you know, they are expecting all those things, simple concept, see you cannot have, when you write an answer in public administration, you cannot write it as a topic based answer, like for example, remember normally right from your 10th to 12th to degree, all those things, what we do, there will be particular topic, for a particular topic, particular answer is there, particular definition is there, by heart it, go write it. But here, any optional, not just for actually provide, even in general, even UPSC, any optional when they ask, you should write it as overall public administration answer. What do you mean by that? Let's say, for example, if the question is asked in paper 1, chapter 2, fine, thinkers kind of heaven. You cannot write only about that. You have to also bring points from where? Some points from Indian administration. You have to link it to there. Let's say, for example, they have asked a question about police here, law and order administration. You cannot write only about this. What you also have to keep linking? So and so thinker had told so and so. So this shows that okay, so and so thinker had told that if you have a very what do you call as this very lengthy or uh, what do you call this pyramidical kind of a hierarchy, the efficiency will come down, red tapeism will that will you have to keep linking. There's something called as community policing, you have to bring it. The thinker called as Mary Parker for a like that. Basic getting the overall point, what is it? You cannot write it as a topic by topic answer. You should have what? Overall hold on the subject. That's the reason revision matters a lot. Fine. So, that is the reason when you have short syllabus relatively like how public administration, notes making will be relatively easy. Based on that, you can make short notes, revise them multiple times. When you revise more and more, you will get much better hold. Then obviously, you have to use a lot of keywords, you have to mention thinkers name, you have to mention their works name. Remember I told you, uh, Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson, you have to write his, what he has written a very famous essay, you will understand the study of administration, so and so, you have to write that. When you write, for example, bureaucracy, you have to write Max, Max Weber. When you write about that's a motivation thinkers. Remember, I briefly told you about something like, let's say, Abraham Maslow. Like that, so many are there. This just I'm just briefing. So you have to write those thinkers' name, their works' name. What are the keywords that they keep using? The more and more you use that, along with obviously Indian angle, so answer chances of answers are very high. Chances of getting better score. I'm telling. Clear. Ah, correct. So, yeah, normally you might have heard. So, a lot of, I mean, in mind we keep, we'll keep thinking about what, sir, do we need to continuously keep updating? What about current affairs? This, that, everything will be there. It is like obviously you have to keep updating any humanity subject. It can be PABAD or PSIR or sociology. You'd have, you have to keep on whatever is happening in and around, you have to keep linking it to it. Because it's not a typical science based subject, right? Not like maths or not like physics. Even to an extent, Karana is also kind of static one. But here you have to keep linking. Let's say for example, simultaneous elections they are discussing, electoral bonds they are discussing, all those angles one or other way, you can keep bringing on some or other way. Like how even in polity we keep updating, economy you keep updating, even here you have to keep on continuously updating. Let's say a new law comes up, new concept, women's reservation bill comes up, that you may have to link it to even here in parliament one. Understood? Or for example, some other, for let's say if, if you can recall few years back, government of India launched a very famous scheme called as Mission Karma Yogi which is for in simple terms, so to bring what you call a better kind of a training or capacity building of civil servants, that you have to link to personal administration chapter, how to improve the working of civil servants, Fine, they like that so many committees they keep appointing, Kiran Kumar Agarwal committee like that, that you have to keep linking it to training aspect, continuous improvement, Fine, you do not have to complete, again another point just clarify, it is not like completely new I have to study, whatever daily current affairs, what everybody does, you will study Hindu, you will study this, that, everything. Then and there itself, we can add, okay, this point I can use it in GS2, general studies. But this I can also use it where? Okay, this will also work for me in PABAD. So, like that, you can have, you have to add it. It is not like completely new. So, should I study new current affairs for PABAD? You are not studying anything new. Whatever you are already studying every day, that what you have to do. You have to link it to this. And so, don't assume that, okay, should I study then extra burden, all those things, it is not like extra burden one. Same points you have to link here. That is it, additional kind of a one. Yeah, so, this is about broadly how to study, like first create a basic understanding means, I mean, basic idea of the chapters, the, the thinkers and all those things. Then obviously, revision aspects, regularly you have to keep writing answers, 
so whatever we'll whenever we keep doing topic by topic or let's say chapter by chapter so you have to keep writing answers we'll discuss you answer writing all those things you have to keep going through it it'll take time it's not so easy and again don't be in an assumption that the first day you come itself first day itself i should understand the optional all those thing because most of you obviously would not have studied public administration maybe based on your if you have done bbm or mba maybe something you might have studied something cuz yes or maybe even in bs some people take these electives or something where they study these organization tailor few people study maybe then you will have an exposure let's say you have not studied don't expect that first day itself i'll start i should understand everything because remember you're starting a new optional first week or 10 days you will have to get adjusted to it okay this is what is the optional dealing with it will take a little time don't be in so lot of hurry because normally in general studies what will happen you by one or two classes you will get a idea okay this is what is all about because theory will be relatively less in gs general studies kind of a one sir but here a little or any optional you will have to start with lot of thinkers and theories in the beginning it will take like some time and so don't be in a hurry that first day itself i should understand everything first day itself i should start writing answer it doesn't happen so you might have seen even in your gs what will happen even after 10 20 class also direct upsc mains questions if you look at it it will not be so easy for you to handle maybe your everyday prelims you will be able to relatively handle mains you might have heard so even after 20 classes i'm still not able to write a upsc direct mains answer because again you need a lot of broader understanding for that revision will matter so so that's the point i'm trying to say in other words don't be in a hurry and of course revisions all those things that is all about that we'll take care of it later how to make that short notes and everything toppers copies all those ideas uh, normally common mistakes you yeah, just just uh, once keep it in mind is what not having a single notes means consolidated notes will be because remember after your gs4 exam you'll have almost 5 days gap for your optional one right if you do not have a short notes imagine if you don't revise optional at least 2 to 3 times in between those 5 days after gs4 before optional you will not be able to recall things so if you want to logically think if you want to revise 2 to 3 times what do you need then let's say you have 100 500 page 1000 page uh, notes kind of a one when will you revise it's impossible within 5 days how will you revise 2 times 1000 page notes hence you should have a kind of a short notes then that will happen only after what multiple revisions ideally we keep telling that what for every paper paper plus a powered paper on powered paper to like that for every paper you should have less than 100 pages of notes when that will happen when not in the first round obviously imagine how many times it will take see for example even gs subject like polity modern india economy itself how many pages will you have so that is class note but after n number of revisions it will come down you will start identify okay if i have this keyword rest all i can recall for that it will take lot of time but i'm telling you we have, we have just written if you don't have a one single consolidated notes and if you do you if you are not writing answers just like what typical polity answer or or let's say when you write a financial administration typical economy answer will not work whatever you write you should make it look like what a bad answer means what what you should have you, you should bring those keywords thinkers that's what you got as you should not write very generalistic answers and purely scholars approach purely gs i mean other words if you make it too much of theory if you make it too much of gs both is a problem you should always have a make kind of a balance between both paper 1 paper 2 they should always keep you should always have a link and so that's what we are trying to say there yeah that all we'll take care of it later and i've already sp- broadly told you about that specificity in vocabulary all those aspects yeah so directly rather than doing it look at it, i'll show you how how to write an answer kind of a one this is about what some person called as dinesh kumar who had scored 312 i think 28 20, 2019 topper i think so how to write an answer one kind of a basic answer we have put just to have an idea the public policy remember we have put a chapter in paper one called as public policy if in case public policy is influenced by various organs or bodies comment now because the topic is about what public policy in the introduction he has told what do you mean by public policy and all those things who are those various actors look at it pressure group civil society media all of them will have it and then the question is about what how is it influenced for that he'll take certain examples like for example pressure group he has taken an example look at it reservations for partidars in gujarat you may might have seen also last month who was protesting in maharashtra what protest was going on maratha reservation protest was going on same thing farmers protesting in ninand around delhi same pressure group judiciary will put example obviously i don't have to tell remember we keep telling something called as vishaka guidelines 
protection of women against sexual harassment at workplace, judiciary, how it puts a important role. Same, same example even he has given, so many other days are there. Civil society over a broader one. You might have heard Anna Hazare. Anna Hazare had conducted a very famous protest called as what? India against corruption to bring that Jan Lokpal bill. That example they have given for civil society, but there are so many other examples also which you can bring. NGOs, NGO is a part of civil, I mean part of civil society, media, media I don't have to tell how much influence the media will keep putting, so fine accountability aspects, then international organization, remember multiple times we have told, even though we brought 1991 reforms, it was because of whose pressure, even though we only brought Narasimha Ra, Manmohan Singh, all those things, it was because of pressure of what, largely pressure of international IMF, international monetary fund, how international organizations will pressure us. Or whatever reforms largely we have brought in what our agriculture policy, you might have heard GM crops, genetically modified crops or export import policy largely is because of the pressure of WTO, World Trade Organizations, how they will have an impact. So those are all you have to keep linking because see what is the question demand? Public policy influenced by what? Organs or bodies, what are those organs, what are those bodies? Keep right there what is basic definition or kind of events, how do they influence? And then for your better, what you call this kind of uh, organization or better presentation, yes, you used a kind of an illustration, kind of a what you call as mind map, whatever tabular things, whatever you call them as. So that, okay, well, later will, the moment you look at it, you will get an idea. Fine. And then obviously, conclusion also will be there. So conclusion is cut there. Conclusion also you have to write. How various, in a democracy, remember, government is not just the only actor. Government is ultimately working for what? Government is not working for itself, right? Government is working for what? People at large. So obviously you have to take their inputs. So obviously make use of them and then draft a policy. If you draft a policy on just on your own, how are you responding to people's need then? You have to take their inputs into account. More than obvious. Clear? Those all we have to discuss. Same things here, we have mentioned it as what? What they are trying to say is that a good answer means you should address why aspect, why means what? Let's say for example, if they are asking about public policy, what do you mean by public policy? Why is it important? First you have to write about that. What is the core demand? How is it influenced by various actors? That was the core demand in the question, or that you have to write. Obviously, key of you have to use, examples you have to use, subheadings. Subheadings means what? What are the various actors? Subheadings, look at it here. So this is kind of various actors he has mentioned. Look at the subheadings, pressure group is a subheading, judiciary civil society, NGO, media, international organization. So they have made subheadings and tried to address. That's what they are calling it as proper subheadings. And of course, you can also criticize it. That criticism part, you can make it as another subheading and try to link in an example world. Like, that we have told multiple times. Basic, obviously, you need definition, you need conclusion also. Fine flow, I, I think it's fine. So those are all we have done. So, okay, we have probably mentioned about our experience, all those things we don't have to tell. So, by the way, you will be having an idea. I have written five means with public administration optional. Chalesar also has written five means with public administration optional itself. Fine, we have also scored 270, 280s, and all those things. Fine, so many factors matter. That's why we have, I mean, we have, we, I don't have to tell that again and again. So, even in polity, we keep telling it, even in, we'll keep telling that. So, n number of factors will matter. Fine, because Success here, as I keep telling, is what in UPSC, do not take only content into consideration. So many factors will matter. Fine, your answer writing skill matters a lot. Are you able to manage that level of speed of writing? And so presentation aspects will matter. It's about what? For every syllabus point, let them ask anything. You should be able to generate a 10 marker to 15 marker content and write it within time. You have so much of content. Let's say you have done a kind of a PhD on unemployment problem in India, who cares? First of all, do you have a scope to write that level of content there? Maximum they are asking you 15 marker. 15 marker means three sides. Introduction, you will be, conclusion, you will be. It is purely kind of an English definition kind of a one. Body part, how will you how will you bring your PhD level of content here? There is no scope for you first of all there. So that is the reason we keep telling you do not have to do research. You have to understand so what is the syllabus, what is the PYQs, what is the demand. And again, if you have this, because normally kind of doubts will be there. See, for example, if you take any option for that matter, provided if you take, you know the, I mean, sir would have explained that how the question paper is structured, right? In section A, paper 1, if you have 250 marks, section A will be there, section B will be there. You will have four questions there, you will have four questions here. 
question number 1 in section a question number 5 in question b are compulsory all those things totally 28 questions will have in 28 questions we can always assume what 23 to 24 will be repeated topics at least 70% questions are from the same topics but the way they ask is different this even if we tell it in your gs also if you have heard out of 20 questions in gs 13 to 15 same topics every year same the way they ask will be a bit different depending on what has changed all those thing because they can't copy paste the same question right every year as i keep telling in gs2 also for judicial activism more or less every year they'll ask the way they ask is a bit different panchayat every year they'll ask parliament every year they'll ask parliamentary committees parliamentary reform common topics for upsc fundamental rights dpsp absolutely fixed but how they change small change will be there same way even here weber every year they'll ask taylor every year they'll ask by rix they think are called as rix every year they'll ask a question on rix evolution of public every year they'll ask county le every year they'll ask but with small changes words they'll play so according to the demand you have to change your content because logically you think in this level of exam when you are writing for as if you expect sir this answer this question exactly same thing i should go and how do you expect obviously if you are expecting that that means you are expecting like a degree one you will get a degree how will you get an ias then obviously that level of hold obviously you should have you can't expect very simple game by now you should have, have a fair idea if you have come and sit here to choose an optional at least you will be what depending on are you belonging to last years or this year batch one batch two or batch three we we'll have a fair idea about okay the what is the level of competition in this exam all those things that level only will be there for everything you should be very consistent do you should not expect very very quick result understood so you have to keep on continuously putting the effort right and that is broadly about it i don't have to keep on telling again and again fine Yeah, so that is broadly the points. Any other uh, doubts? Hmm? The average scores, all those things, we have already uh, given a brief. As I told, any optional for that matter you take. So, to if you complete the paper and address the core demand of the question, two fifty to two sixty you will get. If you want to get that two ninety three hundred till then, it depends on your hold on the optional. Like how paper one, paper two. Uh, how are you able to what link or balance both uh, thinkers are you able to bring all those will decide and within the time frame are you able to address that will decide can you take it to what 300 or not fine right? yeah so if any doubts please ask or else i think we have already done for up to two hours hmm what all other kind of myths were circulating duration duration normally you can assume at least 100 classes you need in other words 300 hours so you can assume four and a half months at least four and a half to five months it will take it will take that because obviously if you leave uh, saturday i mean sundays and all those things also five months you can if you start by april april may june july august so maybe by independence day during that time four four and a half months so by that time you will be also independent <laughs> also because i can i will not tell you that within 70 80 classes you need 100 classes no doubt about it vocabulary in the sense what english you are uh, english you are i mean not necessary you don't have to write very very kind of what high fi english shashi tharoor english all those things is not required but of course because obviously you have to link to so many thinkers all those aspects basic english is obviously required I should not like very super, very high five kind of in English. All those things is not needed. Right, but of course you need to have a when you are writing answers in English medium. All those things that is more than all. whatever kind of English you use in GS, same thing only. Keywords will change a bit. Here you have to use optional specific keywords. Any other things? Yes, sir. Anything you have to tell? because uh, after maybe april first week so classes i think april first week okay so <coughs> any other questions or doubts if you have you can ask usually i'll be taking the initial uh, classes paper 1 and manjunath sir will be taking the second half of class in the middle there may be 
Python classes where we will switch, but in general this is the trend. Any questions? <coughs> No questions. Thank you. Okay then. If you have any uh, doubts or questions, you can uh, you oh. can search for my name basically on Telegram. This pen is not writing here. Uh, Can sir Thailesh Bupalam, S A I L E S H, S A I L E S H. Oh. Oh, it's okay. But if you have any doubts, you can ask there. That is the channel and uh, this is if you want to ask doubts. <coughs> This is on Telegram. <coughs> so I think everybody has now got some idea about public administration, right? Usually in my classes, I provide notes like uh, handouts. You can take a printout of that, and you can start writing the same along with whatever I tell extra. Some uh, examples I may tell extra in class. You can write that in your. Uh, notes manjanath sir will dictate notes in the class this is your primary notes you should you should revise this overall around 10 times by the end of classes in 4 5 months only then usually i suggest you to read any other uh, book because we have integrated most of the thing whatever is necessary in the notes itself so we'll end this session here thank you <coughs>